I'm only giving a bogus answer at the moment, but this is the most frightening experience. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that's and I'll say a bit more. No, I'll say a bit more. Um, well, we've been doing this flying at, uh, around these speeds now for some weeks, and uh, it's... Oh, Well, congratulations to you, Mr. Twiss, and the first thing we'd like to know, I think, is what is it like to fly at this fantastic speed of over 1,100 miles an hour? Well, we've been leading up to it for some weeks now, and um, one doesn't get a great impression of speed at uh, the height we are travelling at, but uh, from the instruments we know we are, in fact, going very fast indeed. We also realise from the uh, ground plots which are being passed to us to position ourselves that the, the ground is going along underneath us, underneath us at a remarkable rate. <laughs> Do you have a sensation of the wind roaring past? Is it hot? Is it cold? What does it feel like? Well, there's no sensation of, uh, of wind at all. We're in a pressurized cabin and uh, it's comfortably warm. As the speed increases, the temperature builds up, but we don't travel for fast enough uh, for, for long enough at this speed to really uh, feel embarrassed by this heat. And uh, did you know that you had flown faster than anyone had before? Well, that, uh, that is not quite so. We, uh, the Americans have flown quite a lot faster in the uh, rocket aeroplanes, but we realized that we were well ahead in this type of aeroplane, in the jet-driven aircraft. When you're shooting along at this speed, what is your greatest difficulty? What is the thing on which you have to concentrate most? Well, on, this on these particular records, we had uh, a very close tolerance to keep to on our height keeping, and uh, that was undoubtedly the, my biggest problem. At what height were you flying? Uh, about seven miles, seven and a half miles, 38,000 feet. And how much up or down could you go? I you to keep an absolute straight line. We had our tolerance over the course itself of 100 meters, and, um, which is 300 feet. How long have you been flying at this sort of speed? For how long? Well, we've been working steadily up to this now for uh, uh, since uh, January or December, and I suppose for the last three weeks at least we've been working up and getting up to the at least 1,100. How many high-speed runs did you make on the day when you achieved this record? Uh, on the Saturday, mm -hmm. this was our second run. The first run was about 8 o'clock in the morning, which was uh, unsuccessful, and the um, the second run, we found out later on, was successful. Do you train specially for this? Do you eat special diet or anything like that? No, I'm nothing, nothing so spectacular. Hard-boiled eggs at eight in the morning, I believe, I've been reported to have said. Do you eat, drink, and smoke like an ordinary human being? I don't actually smoke, but uh, I do drink, and uh, a, certain, a certain amount. And I'm quite a rational human being, I hope. <laughs> What's your reaction now? You woke up this morning and found you were the fastest man. Well, it's, uh, it's very encouraging, and I'm very proud of the, the company I work for, and uh, <coughs> very glad to see the record is back in this, uh, in this country. I imagine it's been a great job of teamwork. No, it has. Um, I'm only one. Any special preparations oh, do you sorry. make? Do you make any special preparations yourself in the way of diet? Do you eat and smoke and drink like an ordinary human being? Well, no, nothing, uh, uh, nothing special at all. We don't, uh, I don't drink in excess. I don't, in fact, smoke. But I'm quite a normal human being otherwise. What did you have that morning? Well, at 6 a.m. we had a hard-boiled egg, but uh, that was no fault of the night porters because I was a bit late for breakfast. I imagine that this is a job of teamwork. Right? Now, Gordon Slade, you as the chief test pilot of the company must be a very proud man, and this very much your own achievement. What I'd like to know from you is, how long have preparations been going on? You must have started a way back on this record. Well, uh, at least three months. It was uh, about the time that uh, we realized the potential of this aeroplane that uh, we also read in an American magazine of, of how they achieved their last record. We immediately uh, got in touch with um, the Minister of Supply and the Aero Club, found out about instruments which were being made then by the uh, by Farnborough, the Royal Aircraft Establishment at Farnborough, and started things moving with a very tight uh, grip on security. We did very much want to be the first people to achieve 
a four-figure record. And we realized that the Americans could do this and could do it probably in a matter of 10 days as soon as they wanted to. Well,